Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Halo ODST. Halo 3 ODST, technically. Even though, again, this game takes place in the middle of Halo 2. So, it's not easy to see the character of a silent protagonist. But sometimes a silent protagonist is constructed in such a way where it's obvious that they are speaking that we just can't hear him. Like, um, the Chosen and Dead at Dark Souls 1 is very clearly saying things to people to prompt them. It's more obvious in Bloodborne as well. He's very clearly saying things to people to prompt them. We just aren't privy to what those are. And so, you know, those characters do in fact have character. We just don't know what it is. And there's a there's a classic example I, I love from uh, in terms of characterizing silent protagonists in the game Persona Three the protagonist is silent but has a bunch of things that you can say in dialogue which you know means that he's only silent because he doesn't have a voice actor to say most of his lines only a few of his lines in battle are actually voice acted anyway but the thing is, because he does say things, we can assume that he does have a character. But there's an odd case because he will sometimes... We don't know what choice is canon, essentially. Because there's typically three choices, and anyone could have chosen any choice. Oh, excuse me, everyone. Just ignoring this fight. Anyone could have chosen any choice because, obviously, they're, it's their game to play. I didn't know if there was anyone there, so I just shot just in case. Nope, it was someone shooting behind me. Yeah. Just keep this thing topped off as best I can. Really? Door won't open? Anyway, the thing about the P3 protagonist is that all the things that are options in dialogue are things that he could say. Which means that logically they're things that he can say. Which means that he thought of them himself. And that's how we can extrapolate what his character is like. It's not that he nece necessarily does say something, but he at least thinks of it. And this is very important. Because there's a wide disparity. Sometimes he's a good friend. Sometimes he's a smug, sarcastic friend. Sometimes he's a kind of a dickhead who might think he's being funny, you know? At one point, a, um, a uh, friend of his will ask for a recommendation. I want to get their cousin, I think, their little cousin. Um, said little cousin is in a wheelchair, unable to use his legs. And the protagonist can uh, advise the purchase of a present of running shoes for him presumably this is black comedy you know gallows humor dark comedy that sort of thing but yes his character can be extrapolated from all the moments like that and so even though he never says a word and the words that he says are chosen by different players and they can be whatever the player chooses, we still know what his character is like. And so in crossover games, this allows his character to, his character to be represented in a certain way. The nameless ODST in this game, the Rookie, is a similar case. Oh no, it's this door. Only this door opens, of course. We can see that he has a um, an inherent curiosity. 
because of the way that he inspects things. And granted, part of the nature of this game is that it's ostensibly a mystery. You know, we're technically supposed to be solving the mystery of what happened to all of our squad mates. Some people have actually been taken as, uh, have taken his silence to be a character point. It's not that he's a silent protagonist because, you know, Master Chief and Noble Six all spoke very rarely. Whereas the other ODSTs speak more frequently. It could be that it's trauma related. You know, he's taken a head injury or he's had a severe shock. One dead hunter and a living one. Hmm. If I know my hunter lore, then that means that this one's going to start the fight enraged, which is not good. Wow, nice. This weapon's awesome. Like, it's just an extremely powerful laser sniper rifle. But that's all it needs to be. It's pinpoint accurate. It's got a shitload of damage. And it looks cool. But that's really all it has. It does not have an amazing ammo capacity. As you can see by the fact that it's a uh, hundred battery power. Five gas, uh, five, I think it's gas powered. Five goes away every single hit. Or shot, I should say. Which means that it only holds 20 shots. It can't be reloaded, so you either have to find a new one or throw the damn thing away. But yeah, in the last cutscene, the way that the ODST skips uh, the burnt detonator on the lake shows that he has somewhat of a sense of perfection, like um, precision. But he also likely, like, like, he knows how to skip a rock. What does that tell us about him, you know? It gives rise to, like, what did he do? Was he alone as a child a lot? Just skipping rocks in a big lake? I think that's an, uh, a weapons cache over there. To me, that's what I extrapolate from the character. Some people also, um, oh no, that's the, that's not a weapons cache. It's a, it's the mission objective. All right. I guess I'll just, yeah, I guess I'll just keep rolling right into it. So it looks like achievements do not pop up, but I might want to actually change that. Because I often make reference to... Stuff like that. This cutscene is also a good example. Look at him, he's trying to unbend that, like it's gonna work. Can you take us there? Like he's curious, you know? Like, will this work? Let me try it, you know? Something about, it's something about him, you know? I'm trying to see if I can capture overlays. You know what? I can. I would have to stop the recording. <laughs> Romeo. New Mombasa Police Department headquarters. Three hours after drop. Nimbed. Clear? So if I recall yeah. correctly, Romeo's the team sniper. Hey, rookie. You out there? Respond. That's an order. So that's Give Buck looking for me because, you know, Even that's nice. Even if he nice. ain't dead, he's lost in that suit. Our comms can't cut through that. Don't give up, huh? What if it were you down there? Just saying. I ain't dead. <laughs> Romeo being a pessimist. It's it's a it's a good knack for them to... The, the writers of Halo have a... I love the alt colors for... It's the deck! For the police pelican, that's nice. Watch out! Ah! Duck! Status! Alive or dead, we're pulling them out. You hear me? Oh, that's noise. That's a good detail. The fact that the sniper rifle actually is missing the bullets that you shot in the cutscene. I like that. That's clever. Anyway, Bungie has a knack for writing characters 
dialogue in a way that very, very clearly. Thanks for picking such a tall building. I'm really digging all these stairs. Can I turn on? Yeah, I don't think there's subtitles. What an unfortunate thing. Yep, subtitles are on. Damn. Do you ever get anyway, tired of they're very good at getting character across in uh, very subtle Monster. ways. Little dialogue tricks, essentially, to help establish a character. Straight ahead, hostile. They haven't seen us. I remember dying here a lot as a kid when I played this. That did it. Shoot and scoop. I remember hearing that line so many times. Holy shit. I'll drop that fire. You kill the operator. Come on out. You know, I don't call myself Al a lot. Yeah, that's fine. Starting to see why, as a child, playing this even on easy mode, I was like, hmm, I die here a lot. Weird. Utumizi na kufleth. Probably said that more elvish than it's meant to be. That did it. Shoot and scoot. I'll drop that turret fire. You kill the operator. Come and get some. Sorry, Chief. They are being blocked by. Oh, I got him. Okay, that's good. You still drawing their fire? Good. Look like a big, juicy target, Buck. You know, they really just made him his Firefly character. You know, I'm pretty sure that this same actor is in Destiny, now that I think of it. Nathan Fillion. But you know what? This thing is beautiful. I like this. I always love really interesting uh, combat areas. It's something that can really help set apart a, uh, a big budget game from a small one. Like we're fighting in a, a very simple, albeit, but a, um, a little a little water fountain, and that's pleasant. I like that. So I actually watched a um, speedrun of ODST recently. Man, every second that they get a fucking grenade, they immediately throw it to the ground and use it to propel themselves forward. Unless they're in a vehicle, which is always faster than doing grenade jumps. And the only weapon that they really use is the pistol. Come on, Romeo. We gotta kill those jackals. I'm working on it, boss. Like, the second that they get a hold of a pistol, they throw away whatever they have until they have the pistol. Cover me. Reloading. And, like, it makes sense. The pistol allows you to get headshots. You're dead. They also very commonly use the uh, noob combo, as it's called. Which is the... I think my nose is clear. Uh, the noob combo, which is a term thought up in Halo 2, I believe. Because of uh, the game's ability to do wield guns. Anyway, the noob combo is... I'm going to get a more reliable gun. I love the sniper. I, I used to hate the thing, but I actually really like it now. But the noob combo, I brought it up in the past, but it's a simple pistol and uh, a plasma pistol. The plasma pistol can charge up until you can peel the shield off of an enemy. More sniper. Bunch of health. Cool, cool. 
This is a boss fountain I'm looking at. This is a room where the game is like, hey, you're going to want to have a big old sniper rifle. Uh, loud and clear, game. I, I gotcha. Yeah, the plasma pistol peels the shield off of a tougher enemy. Which then allows the player to shoot. Wow, nice. Then allows the player to shoot in a, a single headshot. Though I also see the occasional use of the uh, sniper rifle that I currently have, the carbine beam rifle. Oh wow, that was a no scope. You know, I honestly haven't even thought about the term no scope in a couple of years. It's kind of surreal to say it, and unironically at that. Get out of there. You're mine. So filming was actually delayed, and by filming, I mean me sitting in my fucking chair at what, five in the morning, six in the morning, and uh, turning on OBS. Big as I uh, stopped to eat a sandwich. Two sandwiches, in fact. We're out of uh, cheese now. Got to go to the store again. Man, you got a rough, buddy. Shotgun, though. Don't have an interest in that. I'm role-playing. All right. But I'm hungry again. Sometimes I wonder if I have a condition, although I think it's just called being fat. I'm working on it, dickhead. Alright, I'll take one of these. You know, if I bought a gun, I'm talking about this again because I'm just thinking about it. Because, like, I love silence SMGs. But that kind of makes me look like a crazed gunman. You know if I just had one of those? It's like, why do you need a silencer? I don't know. Why do you still guys play? And like, I could just get an airsoft gun if I want that. If I were to actually get a gun, it would probably be the Colt Single Action Army. It's the state gun of my home state. And it's also the weapon of choice of one revolver ocelot. Ah, uh, my ankle. That was a chieftain over there, I think. You know, normally I wouldn't bring it up, but I kind of miss how... Jeez. I'm just gonna grab this. Excuse me. I kind of miss how, um... Enemies in this game don't give. Giving or jibbing, um, for those who watch my Doom LP. Or didn't watch my Doom LP, I should say is when an enemy killed in a particularly violent manner explodes upon death. Wow, that sucks. Anyway, they just exploded some gooey gooey gore on death. I'm just kind of off of that. Split and piercing. But yeah, one of the reasons that I think Halo was able to be sold to children more easily is because typically upon death you just fall over with some like red coming out of you. Reloading. 
now is a great time to grab this health. I can't believe I want to play this game on Legendary. I keep doing that. I, I keep being like, yeah, I play this game with the hardest difficulty. And I, I keep ruining games for myself. Dude, you're in the crossfire. And also, I'm trying to fight melee combat in you know, the 26th century. Wow, that could have been... I won't jinx it. I'm not gonna jinx it. Give me this shit. Because ODSTs don't get slowed down by carrying this thing. I don't know why they do that, by the way. I assume it's to be competitive balance between ODSTs and Spartans, because ODSTs are kind of stronger, as I've been talking about. Or, or rather, ODSTs are supposed to be weaker. But, like, that doesn't seem to be the case. And, like, there's no area in which Spartans and ODSTs can actually meet. And as far as I know, ODSTs won't pick up a gun like this. And if they do, it's just because, like, that's just what happens. Like, it's a random thing. They're not coded to go specifically for that. That's the bridge? You gotta be kidding me. What? You afraid of heights? Get going. Hey. Come on, Romeo. Follow me. Oops. Banshees. <sighs> I suppose it could be to balance them against brutes because normally how it works is that elites and Spartans, Sanghelian like Spartans, are meant to be like an even match for each other. They're meant to be like this this is my equivalent on the other side of the war, you know? But because those aren't in this game, that's replaced by brutes. So to help lessen the gap between an elite, a Spartan, a brute, and an ODST, that's what they did. And because you do always run into brutes, even though you don't run into Spartans or elites, you have the buffed walk speed. All in all, I don't know what the deal is. I like the idea of cultivating brutes as the counterpart to ODSTs, in the same way that elites are very clearly the ODST... Sorry. Oh, I got that. In the same way that um, Spartans and Elites are counterparts to one another. Nice. Big ol' hail of lead. Birds wasted. Lost the pilot on impact. Rest of us are okay. Not for long. Phantoms inbound. Why am I hey, the team's broke? basically almost all back together, though, so turn, that's cool. Romeo, conserve your ammo. This is gonna get hot. That weapon he's shooting there is a missile pod, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's another turret, which means that it has infinite ammo until damaged or ripped off its stand by a player. Um, it's like a stronger rocket launcher that can also lock on to things. This, this song is great. Yep. You can see it just lock onto it and then fly right in the building. I think I need to wait to let it actually find its target. You know, now that I'm thinking, it might actually be weaker than a. Uh... Wow. Cleared, bro. I really like this level, thinking back. Like, I, I remember this being a very memorable level, and, like, you just have your fucking stand up here with your bros. Like, you get to use the missile pods, which are kind of an underutilized weapon. 
Like, you don't really get to see them. I can't even remember if I've used them in another LP. See me almost go off the cliff there. That was fun. This is a good gun. I love this gun. However, I think I'm in need of some heavier ordnance for a while. So, on my first occasion, I will swap this for the Spartan laser that I remember seeing somewhere, but have now lost. I was, in fact, looking for it. Oh, someone's got it. Yep, Dutch. You know, why don't you keep that then, buddy? Heavy metal. Oh, there's a Spartan laser. Okay, I thought I saw it. Oh man, this game's good. You know, it would be so like me to have ODST be my favorite of the Halos. I've always been such a contrarian. I think it's part of my deep-seated fear of being like other people that I just go out of the way to be different just because I want to have something special about me. Rocket Launcher 2? I'm barely, I'm, I'm barely talking here because I'm just having such a good time with the level. Like, this track's amazing. I don't know what I can, I can even say about it. Like, this, this level is kind of a power trip, to be perfectly frank. But hell, I don't hate that. I, levels, I, I love levels like that, where they're just like, hey, just go fucking crazy, okay? You know, do that for me. Do that for us. Just get absolutely fucking crazy in this level. I did it. Oh, this guy's so cool. So this animation upcoming is very important. You notice that he spins it around for maximum pain, but the sniper rifle took the shot. Okay, so this animation is important. That next stab is how elites are killed in Halo Reach when you do the uh, extended animation. Get this thing off of me. Oh, I love how it's just clipping into his neck. <coughs> oh yeah, our friend's dying and I'm being cool. How bad? Not good. Dude, it went right through the plate on his chest and a sniper rifle, and you can see blood through it. And also, it's a spike on the end of a hammer the size of a cinder block. Buck be like, I know a place. All right. Good level. I have a. I've almost beaten the game. <laughs> I guess I'll do my outro then, huh?
Well, I'll let this play out. Alright. I've been Alfred. This has been ODST. Uh, thank you guys for coming by. Having a good time with this game. Very good time. Yeah.